Okay, this is our last video about toxic libs virulent physics. Of course, that's a huge topic, and there's probably more things to fill in that we can get to later someday. But here, in this video, it's going to be short, sweet, to the point. We're going to demonstrate something super powerful, but quite uh, elegantly simple in toxic libs, the attraction behavior. So one of the things you can do in toxic libs is make an object called an attraction behavior. Attraction behavior, and we'll call it AB, equals a new attraction behavior. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to write, and it just takes three arguments. One, two, three. So what are those three arguments? First of all, what does this even do? <laughs> I mean, come on here. So let's say we have a virulent physics world, and it has a bunch of particles to it. What we're saying is we want to assign this particle an attraction behavior. We want to say that this particle is attractive meaning any other particle in the world will experience a force that pulls that particle towards it. it. So there's a, there's quite, you know, it seems like a simple concept, but remember when you have lots and lots of particles to calculate every force between every single one, it's kind of a complex task. We could have a thousand particles and make a whole bunch of them attractive and a whole bunch of them not with different degrees of attraction and a negative, by the way, attraction is a, repulsi is a repulsion. There's a lot that we can do here. So how do we make a particle attractive? Well, first we have to create the attraction behavior and that attraction behavior is going to get assigned to a particle object. How is it assigned? We have to pass in as the first um, argument is which particle. Which particle is the one that is going to experience this attraction behavior? Uh, I think that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 that's right. Okay, sorry, I got confused for a second. Uh, what is the second, the, the second argument? The second argument I will call the radius of attraction. So one of the nice things about these behaviors is they can, they can, we can constrain when they become enabled. So we can say only particles within this particular radius will experience that attraction force. So this particle will, and this particle will, and this particle won't, and this particle won't. This is very powerful because we can make something very, very attractive only when things are very close to it, or very, very well, that actually very, very repulsive only when things are really close to it, or very, very attractive when things are very far away from it. There's a lot that we can do there. So um, that radius of attraction, that's a floating point, something like 100 pixels. And the last thing that we want to do is the strength. So the strength of it is how strong is that attraction? I mean, what's the range for that? I don't know, negative infinity to positive infinity. Probably some reasonable numbers between like negative five and five are you know, probably going to work well for the types of systems you're building. But the important thing to realize is this can be positive or negative. So we don't need attraction behaviors and repulsion behaviors. We just have attraction behaviors. But when something is and uh, has a negative attraction, it is repulsive. <laughs> And I don't mean that as a qualitative judgment that it's not nice to look at. It could be a very beautiful particle that just has a repulsion associated with it. What the hell I'm talking about. One thing that's interesting about this, by the way, that I should just point out before we look at the example is we did say that toxic libs does not have collisions, does not have collision geometry. But there are ways that we can make things, we can, make, uh, we can approximate collisions with, with without geometry. And one of the ways we can do that is with a very, very, very strong repulsive behavior that gets enabled within a small radius. So you can imagine this particle coming along this way, and once it gets very, very near, it shoots out because it's repelled by that particle. And if this one also repels that one, they shoot out in opposite directions. It will appear as if those particles have come together and bounced off of each other. We're not checking the geometry. We're not doing a kind of rotation of the velocity, pool, cue, ball, billiard simulation. But we're going to get something very, very similar. And that's something you might try to do as a little exercise for yourself. Uh, by the way, this is a guess too much of an aside, but I'm just going to mention it. One of the really innovative things that that Nokia Friends um, example that, that I showed you by Karsten Schmidt does is if you have strangely shaped geometry, one thing you could do is as they get near each other, you could create a bunch of spring connections that suddenly get added and connected between those objects. And as the objects come in, those springs contract and then push it away, and then you delete those springs. So that's another way, really, that's kind of a very advanced technique to figure that out. But quite possible, if you know all of these vertices, 
there's no reason why you couldn't connect a bunch of vertices to another object's vertices that are particles with springs. So anyway, there are ways of getting collision-like things to happen in toxic lips. I'm, I'm speaking in generalities here. Let's go back to that attraction and, and, and attraction behavior. So if we come over here to this particular example, I'm going to run it. And we're going to see a couple things about this example. Number one, all of the objects are attracted to this center object called the attractor. And you can see as I move it around, they follow it. This has an attraction behavior. All of those particles themselves have repulsion behaviors. You can see that's why they're not overlapping or coming in. They're kind of like self-organizing into this nicely spaced out system because they don't want to get in within a certain distance of each other. So uh, just briefly, I'm going to um, take out that repulsion behavior just so we can see what this looks like. This is yet another, I think we've done this like, you know, three times now we did attraction with, with a formula for gravitational attraction. We added that into um, box 2D, and now here we have it here in toxic libs. We get it for free by just saying, hey, this attractor is a particle object. And here, look, physics.add behavior, new attraction behavior, and let's look at this. Let's go backwards. Point one is the strength. Width is the radius of of attraction. So anything within the entire screen, we just use the width of the window, anything on the screen is attracted to this particle. And then the particle is this. Oh boy. <laughs> so this is a little moment of confusion. Let's go back over here and say, ah, I erased that, but we can get it back. Right? Let's, we're going to make this, we're gonna, this is going to make so much sense to us when we look at this. It's going to be a really nice moment. Okay, if we're making this attraction behavior, We're making a new attraction behavior. And the first thing we have to put in there is which particle is going to be assigned that attraction behavior. OK, so let's make a particle. Particle P1 is a new particle. And hey, that's the particle that should experience it. And here's the width, and here's the strength, the radius and the strength. right? This is how we might normally write it. And there are plenty of examples where you will write it this way. Make the attraction behavior, assign it to that particle P1. But something strange is going on in this example, no pun intended. I've got the word this there. What is this? Class attractor extends particle for, uh, vertical particle 2D. If you ever have done anything in Java before, <laughs> you might have encountered the word this. This is kind of like saying me. It's this like self-referential, introspective, thoughtful way of saying, who am I at this moment? Who am I at this moment? I'm an attractor. This particular attractor, whatever attractor has just been made, that's the one that should get this. Um, that's the one that should get this attraction behavior. So in other words, if we have a class, um, I'm going to call it fish, right? We made up our own fish class, and there we're making a new attraction behavior, and I'm just going to kind of scribble this out, right? That's where we put this in. What that means is this particular fish, the object that we're in, we're in the fish class, this fish gets assigned that attraction behavior. This, of course, only works if fish extends verlet particle, right? Because we need um, <laughs> the only types of things that can be assigned in attraction behavior are verlet particles. So we either make the particle and assign it, or, we, or we're in the class and we assign it to the object that's currently being made at that time, this particular object. So you know, this is the kind of this is the kind of stuff that's confusing and awkward and weird, but you know, hopefully that makes some sense to you. And, and, and the thing to just remember is this is another word for like me. Who am I? I don't know if that helps. OK, so we're back over here. And we can see we're adding the attraction behavior with point 0.1. We run this. We can see everything is attracted. Now if we go back to particle, we could say, ah, we're doing the same thing. Attraction behavior to this particle, r times 4. So r is the size of the circle. We're saying anything that comes within. Actually, r is the radius of the circle that width is the diameter r times 2. But anything that comes within the radius of the circle times 4 is going to experience this repulsion force, which is going to be pretty strong at negative 1. And one thing I just want to show you, if I take this out and say r times just not r times 4, and we kind of let it stabilize a little bit, you can see that these circles are allowed to come much closer together now. They're still repelled by each other a little bit. And if I say something like, r times 10, which would be much more extreme, right? those circles really don't want to get near each other. And you can see how that repulsion force is very, very strong, and they're kind of staying spread out. So how we tune those forces, is the attraction force stronger? Is the repulsive force stronger? A great exercise, by the way, I think, to try, and I, I'm going to mention this that you could do, is um, create a system. 
Here's an exercise for you. This is my assigned exercise. <laughs> I'm assigning it to like, I don't know, myself, because I'm going to do it someday. But is create a, a particle. It has two attraction behaviors. A very, very strong repulsion behavior with a small radius and a slightly weaker attraction behavior with a large radius. This means that any particle that wanders in will start to be attracted, will come on in, and when it gets too close, it will be repelled. And you might get this interesting thing where particles kind of come in, repel, come in, repel. So it's kind of a, it's something you might try as an experiment. Can you make a, a particle have both a repulsion and an attraction force, obviously with different radii and different strengths? OK, so hopefully this um, helps you a little bit. I encourage you to also take a look. I, th I think I mentioned this already, but there is a wonderful example. Um, I'm just going to pull it up. Under, uh, you can see it if you go to contributed library examples called Attraction 2D. Um, this is a wonderful example, which I encourage you to look at also, which demonstrates attraction and repulsion forces. Here are a whole lot of particles, all with repulsion forces, pouring into this Verlet physics world that has gravity. And as I move the mouse, it creates an attraction force, and you get this kind of fluid-like behavior. Well, really, really simple example is just particles with attraction behaviors. Um, and it's really nice that you can kind of do this stuff so easily with toxic libs and a lot that you can do here with this stuff. OK, great. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos about toxic libs. And uh, stay tuned. In the next <laughs> set of videos, we will uh, we'll come back and talk about steering behaviors. And we're going to go back to actually not using any physics libraries for a little while to look at the kind of details of steering libraries. And then, of course, if you want to, you can add all all those steering forces into uh, Box D and Toxic Libs examples as well. Thank you and see you later.